Hi, everybody. Coach Allison back with your week 14 Defy Aging workout. This week, we're back to one circuit, kind of the more standard rotation through uh, one circuit, eight exercises for three rounds. Each round is going to be timed a little bit differently. Round one is 40 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Round two is 20 on, 20 off. So just keep in mind that round will go pretty quickly. Um, and then round three is the reverse of round one. So round three is 30 seconds on, 40 seconds off. So round three, you're a little more tired. Um, you get a little extra rest time. All right, let's go through our eight exercises. Number one, ba uh, band pause back row. All right, so we need a, obviously a band for this. It's right in the name. Um, so we do band back rows quite a bit. What we're doing differently with this is adding a pause in the contracted part of the exercise. So you step on the band, okay, cross it, keep those wrists turned inward so the wrists are turned towards one another, come into that standard back row position. So that's bent forward to about a 45 degree angle with a slight bend in the knees. Notice how my hips went back as I leaned forward or as I hinged forward, it wasn't simply falling like this. So. Yeah, body weight in your heels. Okay, so we pull those arms up and back, kind of like pretend you're trying to touch your elbows behind your back to one another, and that'll help you squeeze the elbows in as opposed to letting them flare out. Uh, keep those shoulders down as opposed to shrugged, and we do a one to two second pause at the top. So it's not a long pause, it's just enough to kind of hold it there. So pull, pause, down, up, pause. So no pause at the bottom, um, but only a pause at the top. That is our band pause back row. Bosu high plank is our next exercise. Got our Bosu ball. That's this blue half ball. Okay. Um, you're going to put the blue side down and you want the flat side on the top. I, can't, I, should, I was trying to get to set up. I think it actually made the whole thing worse. Okay. So I want you to see my whole body position here. All right, so you can either grip the sides of it or you can put your hands flat, whatever you prefer. I like to put my hands flat. Uh, so otherwise gripping the side would be like this. This makes it feel like my hands are gonna slip off, I don't know. Um, okay, legs out, extended, hips are level. So watch out for the, you know, the hips up too high. Watch out for the hips sunken down low. Both of those are not great. Uh, we also want to try to get the boasted ball level. So that requires a little bit of planning of where your hands are. So if your hands are too far back, that's not level. Okay, right? If they're too far forward, actually you'll fall, so you won't do that. Um, if one hand is too far to the side or to the middle, it's going to be uneven like this. So again, you want, that's one, maybe do this in front of a mirror so you can see the ball. And we're going to hold it here. You can do this on knees. If you're doing knees, make sure you're not on a tabletop. So make sure your hips aren't up because this isn't working your core muscles, but instead, sink those hips down into a plank it is kind of a you know um a little unsteady that's part of the challenge so it's not working for you go to a floor high plank either option with toes or knees if the wrists are bothering you um, because this is a it's quite a bit of time in a flexed wrist position so if that bothers your wrist for any reason feel free to take it to a standard forearm plank you can actually even do that on the BOSU. So if your wrists are bothering you, try this, okay? Either on the plank or on the ball. And so many options. You can always do a, a hand or a forearm, so a high or a low plank up on an incline, like something like this, like a tape, a bench, yeah, to keep you off the floor. So dozens of options there, not really, many options. Lateral box run is our next one. Okay, we've got our stepper. You can choose whatever height you would like for this. Obviously, the higher you choose, the more challenging, right? Start by straddling your stepper or your box. You go up, up, down, down. All right, and you're trying to stay kind of level with the head. So notice how my head isn't going all the way up, all the way down. But instead, I'm kind of keeping my knees and hips sort of bent, staying relatively level. And then once you get the pattern down, Add some speed. So it's called a lateral box run, right? Definitely. I recommend, just because I've tried it, I've done this myself, I recommend looking down at the box as you do that. Not Even if the, you're in front of a mirror, look down at the box. Looking in the mirror at it can like kind of mess you up. 
um, and kind of make your feet place in a weird place. Just look down at the box and make sure you're stepping safely on it and not too far forward or too far off to the side. From experience, I'm going to give you that little piece of advice. Next one, it's a band single arm lat pull down. I have to do a little bit of setup for this, so bear with me. Okay, so single arm uh, band lat pull down. Your coaches will have the band tied up to something very, very high. You want this one really high. So um, for reference at this gym, I have it tied up to the very, very top of our Smith machine. Most of the gyms have those nice racks, those gym, jungle gym racks. You can tie it up high. Anyway, so your coach will have that part taken care of for you. Oops, and that fell. Alrighty. Okay, so your lats are the muscles back here. Standard lat pull down. You have both arms pulling down. So we're gonna do single arm, more than All right, starting up, and we pull down and back. So you're pulling, obviously the, the arm is straight up and down. Pull down and back. Some people might pull my wrist turned inwards, my fingernails facing the opposite way. And I'm pulling down and back, trying to tuck that elbow back into my like back pocket here. So pull, exhale on the pull. Okay, make sure you're not pulling too low down here. Your hands should come kind of right to the side of the chest and elbow kind of from the front, even though I don't have the band, elbow stays in nice and snug, very similar to our bent over row. Elbow stays in nice and snug. So that is our single arm band lat pull down. You'll do uh, half the time on each side, so your coach will call out halfway, and you'll switch arms. All right, next exercise, single arm overhead carry. It's pretty much just what it sounds like. You're one dumbbell for this one. Okay, got your dumbbell. Oops, hello. All right. Take that weight, press it overhead. We're gonna do palm turned in. So notice how my palm is turned this way, not forward, all right? And that helps you to get the better alignment, better positioning because we want the arm straight up and down, bicep very close to the ear. Um, you want the elbow straight. I know for a lot of exercises, we tell you not to lock out your elbow. This is not one of them. This is one where you do want to lock out your elbow. Having sweatshirt issues. Okay, so we don't want this. Right? You want this. So from the side, you want to show my bite, my arm is straight up and down, not bent. And from here, we're gonna go for a walk. So your coach will have, same like a farmer's here, your coach will have a designated area for it to walk. So you do slow, I guess you won't be able to see me doing too many steps. You just do a slow controlled walk, keeping that arm locked in tall. Your coach will call out halfway and you'll switch arms. All right, Palov Press. Your coaches will decide to do this either with their cable machine or a band because both work. I'm going to set up the band and I'll be right back. All right, Palov Press. I'm doing this with the band. Like I said, some your coach may have you do with the cable machine. Same thing. So you step out. Um, you want the, the, ink, the band or the cable anchored to your side. So as you can see, it's to my right side. And you step out until it feels, you feel some tension, you know, like it's getting challenging to hold on. And then uh, overlap your hands for your grip. You know, drop your shoulders down and back so we're not shrugging. Press forward, pull back. Well, not pull back, but release back. So press forward, release back. Try not to let your shoulders shrug on the press because that can sometimes happen. Try not to, you know, tilt like this. We want to keep our hips. I'm just going to show you, even though I don't have the band now anymore, but want your hips to stay level and your shoulders to stay level because what, what's going on here is the side that the band is on, that whole side is really engaging and this side kind of isn't. So you're going to feel very lopsided and you have to use those core muscles and chest and shoulders, but core muscles to level it out, to balance it out. So my body would kind of want to be like doing this, maybe even like turning my hips a little and my legs, but your job is to stay very straight, level, stay forward, shoulders square, press forward, release back. So that is our pal of press. Medicine ball low slam. This one's really fun. Typical medicine ball slam is up overhead. You know, we're not gonna do that. Think of it more like a push or a shove. I think that word, that phrasing helps. Cause it's not really slam in, I think means like bring it up high, big movement. This we're shoving it, shoving it into the floor. So almost in that same body position as the band back row and Oops, fell out of my hands. See how I'm using the force from my upper body? So I'm using a little bit of, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, with my upper body, shoving it down, 
very, very, very different than a standard medicine ball slam. So have fun with that one. Some of the, you, you will want a ball, one of the slam balls that bounces. I know some of the clubs have balls that are, are sand filled. So they, they go down and they, they plop, they stay there. So try to be sure you're using the ones that bounce. All right, one more, try it's called a power stand. All right, power stand. Sitting down on something. Lower you go, the chat more challenging it is. So your coach will have a couple different heights to pick from. All right. Um, in, to get, in essence, we're standing up and sitting, but of course it's going to be a little more than that. Power stand, because we're going for power, um, explosiveness, force, all those adjectives. Not momentum. So we don't want to swing the arms and we don't want to like lean back. I'll show you what I mean by that. So a little stand, powerful, fast, and then sit down kind of slow, not slow motion. We just don't want to plop down. So let me actually, I think the side would be better for this. Okay. So come up with power and then sit down slowly. Back up, sit down slow, back up. So yes, take a full sit. Don't just tap. Don't just, we're not doing squats. So don't just tap your butt. Sit all the way down like you could lift your legs. Um, but what I meant by momentum is that we don't want, now we don't want to lean back. So we, what we don't want to do is this. See how I'm leaning back and using that momentum? Want to avoid that. First of all, it doesn't help your legs in the way that those muscle fibers, those fast switch muscle fibers that we want to target. It doesn't help those as much as we want. Um, also, <laughs> You have a risk of falling backwards for real. So don't do that. Okay. Um, yeah, that is our eight exercises. Hope you like week 14 and we'll see you back for week 15.